Welcome back to Justice for Channel AC2 in Formula 197 and round 8 brings us to the original Grand Prix, first held in 1906 in Le Mans and held here 18 times at Manicourt from 1991 to 2008, it's the French Grand Prix. Over the years the French Grand Prix has been held 90 times across 16 different venues, however it is no longer on the F1 calendar. During its most recent spell hosting the event, Paul Ricard got a lot of flack for being both boring and headache inducing. However, I will defend the 2021 and 2022 races, I thought they were both pretty entertaining. However, it's not a street circuit in a decadently wealthy and or problematic state, so we're just not going to race there anymore, you know? Don't get me wrong, I think both Paul Ricard and Manny Core as F1 circuits were fine, but just fine, you know? Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe sh but I think it's a big shame we don't have a French Grand Prix anymore, and you can expect a similar sentiment when we reach Hockenheim too. <laughs> what do you mean we can't have a French Grand Prix in Germany? For the German Grand Prix, obviously. Smart ass. In the real 1997 qualifying, Michael Schumacher made it back-to-back -back poles, two tenths clear of the rest of the field. Brother Ralph delivered an excellent third in his Jordan, Villeneuve could only manage fourth, while Jarno Trulli's life at Prost, subbing in for the injured Panis, got off to an excellent start. He managed to find sixth, the beginning of his reputation as a bit of a one-lap specialist. Under the super sub, Alex Wirtz built on the promise of his debut by getting seventh ahead of teammate Alacy in eighth, the two Benettons ahead of the two McLarens. In the Panis playthrough, we could only manage 11th. This is, again, just one of those tracks in the game. The types of corners that are in it, how good the AI are, AI are, the AI the AI are f quick here, right? <laughs> and we just have to deal with it. If it's wet, we might get a little bit of a saviour. If it's dry, it could be tough. But I'm still going to set Alacy's real life 8th as the target because we managed 11th. I think if I drove a little bit better, the performance boost of the Benetton, the manual gears, I might might be able to get 8th. If I can start with inside the top 10, I'll be happy. But let's make Alacy's real life 8th as the target. And once again, we would have to work for that target. Another dry qualifying session. Pole time last year was a 1 minute 8.4. As you can see, I'm already getting the accident to look back because it means I'm throwing the car about trying to find the pace. Let's see if I can find some more. Turns 1 and 2 are completely flat if you get the angle through, and then you line up for turn 3, which is Estoril, down slowly to third gear. Again, try and angle the car. I get to the inside as early as I can, get the power down. Obviously, the sooner you're on the power, the sooner you're accelerating along this long straight. I actually got through that first sector in the high 20s. It was kind of the story of my qualifying I was doing good sectors here and there but never putting all the good sectors together in one lap so we've been through the hairpin at Adelaide carried the speed through nicely then shift down to fifth to go through Nürburgring which is turn six and seven and then you don't want to carry too much speed into 180 it's easy to kind of run it wide but I see I'm a bit unhappy there I snatched on that change down to first and actually you want to go down gradually because if you snatch down through the gears it just scrubs all your speed off however the lap's not ruined only two tenths away from Villeneuve I'm a bit messy through Imola so I need to try and build the speed back up through turn 12 and then it's the final sector turns 13 14 and 15 you need to attack the chicane really and then get a good angle into the final uh, corner I get a little bit messy as you can see the accidental look back kind of puts me off bit of a messy line it's a 1 minute 10.9 it probably could have been in the mid 110s if I had a better final sector. On lap 11, Schumacher has improved and I'm improving with it. So I'm only two tenths away, about three tenths really, and I'm attacking through Imola with a much better line in towards turn 12. And as you can see, snatch on the change down to first, scrubs all the speed off. So need to attack 13, 14 and 15. In we go, glance the curb, but carry way too much speed and ruin the lap. Two potentially great laps both ruined. How costly will it be? I definitely didn't get my best possible lap in, but by the end I was really throwing it round trying to find pace, but I feel this like it's going to be better. Michael Schumacher well, is on pole from Jacques Villeneuve. It's very rare we see non-Villeneuve pole. Berger, well done in third. Frentzen, Irvine, Hakkinen in sixth. Where are we? Ralph Schumacher can only manage seventh. Old Jordan. Ugh. Forget that as a sentence. Where are we? We're worse than last year. Only by one, though. We are 12th, just ahead of Nakano and Hill. So Schumacher very much the man on form. Villeneuve will be keen to get past him. Hope Berger can hold from there. 
And then for us, we just need to try and find a way into the points. But yeah, all Jordan fourth row is what I was trying to say. Good from Panis, obviously not replaced in the game. In real life, Schumacher won this race from pole by 23 seconds from Heinz Holt-Frentz and it would have been very straightforward, if not for a late rain shower to kind of spice things up, causing a few spinners. Schumacher included, but he kept it going and obviously took the win. Uh, Alex Wirtz also spun, but unfortunately couldn't keep it going until he retired late on. Now, as we know, John Lacey is usually very good in these sorts of conditions and he was running a little bit quicker than David Coulthard in the closing stages and on the last lap, he went for a move to try and take fifth place. However, there was contact, Coulthard went off and for the second race in a row, Coulthard would miss out on points and finish seventh. I can feel the chin getting angry. He's not going to be happy. In our Panis playthrough, what a surprise, we struggled. If I'd had a tidier first couple of laps, I might have got myself into the points, or for at least a point, and try and hold on to it from there. It's gonna be a similar situation. If I can have a tidy first couple of laps, benefit from some of the concertinas, from some of the incidents, I might scrape in to get a point. That's if it's dry, obviously. If it's wet, I might do the uh, go in, switch tires strategy. I feel like this could be the place to kind of pull the trigger uh, and make that sort of risk and just see how much time I can make back up on the monsoon tyres. I will happily take points. If I can come away with anything, I'll be happy. Racing Di Milano commented on the last video, it's, it's these races, the, the track you struggle at, are going to be the most important ones because that might be the difference come the end of the season. Okay, we have a wet race at Manicor. Let's keep it tidy off the start. And we are green, or well, the lights are out, excuse me, in Manicor. Sluggish start, but let's just take it nice and gentle. I have a much more aggressive setup than in Spain. I had a lot of downforce which as we saw meant I wasn't really great in the straights but obviously had a lot of grip in the corners. However, they're driving away. Oh, we've gained absolutely nothing, but there's a concertina up to the hairpin. Oh! Um, wow, I should have been known to be a little bit more careful on the dry tires. It's remarkable I've not just clattered into people. I feel like everyone was already stationary when I arrived. That was how that wasn't a bigger accident, I don't know. But look as we come through. And it's almost inverted when it's wet. That's the sort of corner in the dry I'd be really slow on. But we close right up to them there. Oh, it's, oh, it's too much. It, oh, no. I'm going to have to go in. It's been a old oh, nightmare. First lap, <laughs> Deniz drives into us as we're trying to rejoin. That wasn't a reckless rejoin. I was simply crawling back onto the track, Pedro. Come on. It's been an awful first lap. We've lost four places. We will be stone dead last before we've even probably hit our pit box. Come on. <sighs> Monsoon. Off we go. It's looking a bit slippery out there. Do you want to come in for wet tyres? What do you mean? That's a um, that was a bit of a why on earth have I just slipped straight off? He's ended up off the track and on the grass. What is going on? What? These feel awful. This genuinely feels horrific. What's happening? It feels like I'm driving on ice. The race leader, Michael Schumacher. In fifth position, Mika Hickenham. I'm actually really confused now. It's looking I'm a bit have slippery to... out there. Do you want to come in for wet tyres? So you're telling me the monsoons? 
should I not be in monsoon tyres? When do I need monsoon tyres then? Like, it's literally grey and thundering. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just keep... Right, sorry guys. I'm going to have to just stop and quickly re-watch what I've just recorded. Because I'm sure I put monsoon tyres on. If I have, and monsoon tyres are indeed the wrong tyre, I'm completely confused as to what the tyre situation is in this game. I thought it was... So I have just put monsoon tyres on. Confirmed. Definitely. And they're awful. They feel awful. I'm about to be lapped. I don't even care. I'm going to hold up the crew a little bit here as I come around this corner. Schumacher. Wow, Schumacher is a... Uh, he's Reagan Meister. He's very far ahead. Um, oh my god. Right, let's get in. This, this race is now very much a lost cause. If I can just try and cross the track without any issues, which I do. So let's get the wets on. I'm in the freaking pits! Right, wets. So have we got this wrong? Because this feels now not just okay, but also it feels kind of like... What's the, is this better than Slicks? Okay, this kind of feels like how it was before. Does the game actually give you the right tyres? Because this doesn't feel dissimilar to how it was before I went in. Like, it's still slippery. Because... You saw how slow I was going on the monsoon tyres. You have to imagine that also the slicks would similarly be pretty awful. Maybe it does put you on wets, and maybe wets is the right tyre. It's confused me because I then have no idea what scenario you need monsoon tyres, because I've never seen it any wetter than this. If monsoon tyres are the wrong tyres for this weather, when, when would you ever need them? This changes the complexion of wet races a little bit, because actually I feel like it now no longer ma matters. You can tell that I've stopped concentrating a little bit, and I'm just f fed up and annoyed. There's no secret weapon to going in now and suddenly being on monsoon tyres and razzing it past everyone. That's not... It's not an option. It seems like you get the right tyres... Because in fairness, the engineer doesn't shout at you when you start the race in the wet. So you must have the right tyres on. Oh, so we've now had the flip side of it. Last time we were so far ahead... Murray got bored and started talking about Benetton. Now we're so far behind, he's talking about Alacy. He's probably being a little bit kinder than he could, you know, should be based on this performance. We're losing time to Pedro Deniz for crying out loud, though. Like, also seems like wet weather is no longer a saviour. Seems like it's it's completely track dependent how it was so much of a benefit for us, how we did so well in Spain, I will never know. Maybe it's because I went for a more high downforce setup. Ah, oh, you f I just want to I just want to leave the track now. I just want to to get out of here. Oh my god. It's the penultimate lap. Pretty sure it's the last lap, technically, but... Because <laughs> I am... 
I am that far behind. I'm in a no man's land. God, it is home Grand Prix as well. Sean, I am so sorry. <laughs> this is... Um, we got the strategy wrong, the setup wrong, and then as, you know, as Jean was prone to do back in the day, you know, very emotional, got a little bit hot under the collar, and it just exacerbated things and made it so much worse. So this is the first time I think I'm ever going to cross the line a lap down. Will we do a final lap? Or will it put us out of our misery? Thanks, game. That is our worst ever result in any Justice 4 playthrough. Worst performance, worst result by a country f mile. So Michael Schumacher wins from Jack Villeneuve. It is the worst possible result we could have hoped for. Well done to Berger for holding on third. Hakenham with a vital couple of points for McLaren in fifth. Irvine in sixth. We finish last. One lap down. Our fastest lap was about two seconds down on Schumacher's fastest lap. We weren't on the pace. And it's just confused me so much about wet weather even more. Because everything I know, I thought I understood about the game in the terms of the weather and the tyres has just been thrown out the window. So it seems like it does put you on the right tyre. It seems like wet tyre is the right tyre, not monsoon. I have no idea what you use monsoons for. Good performance in the wet is making sure you put on a more conservative setup because I was just, I felt awful then. The car felt awful even on wet tyres. So, Michael Schumacher now leads the championship by nine points. He is the man to beat. We hold on to second. Villeneuve can only shut the gap to us to two points. Uh, Frentzen is in fourth. Berger, an excellent result for him up in third. Put a little bit of space between him and Irvine. In the constructors, Williams lead by two points from Ferrari. We drop back heavily. Well, again, well done, Berger, just for keeping us in the points. We are at least under 10 away from Williams so not the end we're still in the fight so we've kind of gone from quite wanting rain to not knowing really if we want rain or not it almost colors how I should set up the car which is going to be an interesting one because the next track is Silverstone which is not a track you want to go super high down for so it's one of the quickest on the calendar it's one I've enjoyed so I'm hoping for it to stay dry in Britain so we're doomed, basically. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to have a think. I need to get your thoughts. What? The, how the hell do I approach wet races and car setup now, knowing what I know? Well, I hope, despite that absolutely sh shocking performance, you still enjoyed the video. Thank you so, so much for watching, uh, especially if you've gotten to this point. I really do appreciate it. If you have gotten to this point, just a little something to let you, me know you've got to this point. Um, Fs in chat, please. F's in chat if you got to this point. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we can recover and get back on track at Silverstone.